see something cool? Cram more current through a conductor than it's capable of taking and it glows right up until it melts. You keep going till she grabs you by the ears and tells you to stop. Wrap its ass in glass and suck out any gas and then two things change fast. With no oxygen, now it can't burn and the hot wire starts boiling off electrons into the vacuum inside the tube. If we put a positively charged plate on the other side of the space, it'll attract those negatively charged electrons. Paul Abdul taught us this lesson with a great ass and a dancing cat. Now we have a device that lets electricity flow in one direction but not the other because our filament will only emit electrons, it won't attract them. Since this only has two parts inside, it's called a diode. In Greek, di is two, and ode is a stepped-on version of the Greek word hodos, meaning path. A century later, and that's still the name we use for the solid-state component that does the exact same job in almost every electronic device you own. This is a diode. And so is this, and this, and this. If we put a grid of wire in between the filament and the plate, we can modulate the motivation of the electrons on their way to the plate by applying a tiny voltage to the grid. Like a little electrical Archimedes, a tiny change in the signal to the grid makes a huge change in the amount of electrons that make it to the plate. And if we can use a tiny signal to control a big signal, we just invented the amplifier. We did this with an emitter, a grid, and a collector. Though how it works is completely different, the function is the same. And that's why we call the terminals on modern VJT transistors the emitter, base, and collector. And that's pretty cool.